Hey guys, somebody's gun here. I had some time to sit down and speak with the trio FNCS winner, Miro. So make sure to check him out on his socials and enjoy the interview. Definitely some stuff to be learned here as he is a player that has ascended to one of the top positions in this past season. So enjoy. First of all, and thank you so much right Miro, into for it. joining me. It's pronounced Miro, right? Yeah, like Miro. Gotcha. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me, man. Um, First of all, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, go for it. Uh, I'm Miro, one trio FNCS, you know, just been chilling recently. Nice, nice. First of all, congratulations on that uh, phenomenal job. I have have no idea, honestly, how you guys won. Like, as a trio, you definitely were one of my favorites, but as far as, like, the drop spot, that was shambles, man. Oh, yeah, it's just, like... With uh, drop spots and finals and stuff, a lot of people just like ego contesting. Like we were going to land somewhere where someone really didn't care about how they did in grands. So we just didn't want to grief our grands. As long as we lived off spawn with like shield in our inventory, we would have did good. Yeah, I clearly proved to be true. Um, so let's, let's start from the beginning. When you first started playing video games, what, what were you playing and what system were you on? Um. Uh... It was actually my brother that got me into video games. I was playing, like, Call of Duty as young as, like, I think, I want to say four, but I think I actually started, like, playing heavy when I was, like, five, six. I just played a lot of Call of Duty on, like, the PS3 and stuff because my brother always used to play it. Okay. What COD were we playing? COD 4, Modern Warfare? I think, I think COD 4 and, like, World at War. Like, World at War and COD 4. Nice. And you've been gaming since then, I would assume? Oh, yeah. So, was there ever a, a moment, obviously, you've achieved it now, but before, you know, uh, this year, was there a moment where you had aspirations to be a pro gamer? I mean, like, I've always known that I'm, like, I've always been really, like, crazy good at video games. Like, I've, I was always good at Call of Duty. I was never bad. Like, I could I honestly probably could have went pro in Call of Duty, but then... Call of Duty started getting a little dry for me, so I went back to, like, at first I started playing Fortnite, and then, like, I started playing Black Ops 4 again, and I was super good at it, but then I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna go back to Fortnite, and then I just kind of stuck with Fortnite. Okay. I was, I've always been, like, good at video games, so unlike anything I've played. And did anyone push you to want to become a gamer, or was something internal for you? Uh, kind of internal, like, at first, like, when I made my first money off Fortnite, my mom was, like, happy or whatever, but... If I wanted to, like, do what I did this year, like, move to Virginia and stuff, when I made my first amount of money, she would have just said no. Like, <laughs> I don't like and then I started making, like, good, like, decent money, and then she was like, okay, well, maybe maybe I should trust him, and then, you know, it kind of just went from there. Yeah. Well, it sounds like your mom cares, at least. Oh, yeah. Like, my whole family cares. That's awesome, man. Um, And I'm I'm assuming they've probably been super supportive since you guys won last weekend. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, my brother would always watch her versus streams and stuff. Nice. Does your mom get anxious? I know some other parents have talked about not being able to watch their kids play. Does your, your family watch you? Um, I'm pretty sure my, my sisters watch me a little bit. My mom, she's like, she doesn't really know how it works, honestly. <laughs> she just knows what I do, but she doesn't know how it works. So she doesn't really understand. But my brother and I think my sisters watch a bit. Gotcha. That's cool. Um. When did you start playing Fortnite? How long have you been playing the game? Um, I think it was so oh, it was uh it was two months after Fortnite like released on like PS4s and stuff. Like so like it came out in I think August and mm -hmm. I started playing like October of like that year, whatever it came out. Okay. So, and I, I guess I guess you could say I've been playing since the start. Yeah, I mean that that's basically the beginning. I think that's the first time they actually had a season, so you've been playing at least since they started that yeah and you started on console when did you you make that transition to pc uh squads is something like the transition <clears throat> transition into like fortnite and then like at first i kind of just got a pc i just honestly just to have one like i was like i didn't really know i guess too much about the competitive scene until like after buga won world cup so I just honestly just wanted a PC just to have one, really. I just, just, you know, just for fun. And then, like, I started, like, I guess you could say playing in comp. 
and I kind of just liked it a lot and just nice. stuck with it. Well, and you play on controller, you started on console, and there's been a lot of people that have gone back to console. What's made you stick with PC once you, you made the transition? Um, Well, don't get me wrong. I've gone back to console for a couple of events, but that's more just I literally couldn't find anybody to play with for PC and stuff like that because at the time, I went back to console. Like I, I went back to console for a couple of cash cups and like duo FNCS, but that was when I really wasn't that good at the game so i couldn't find like it was just mainly because i couldn't find nobody but like as of now i realized that i can compete at like the top level and make the same money i'd be making on console and i just kind of stuck with it nice well i mean you can't really go any higher than you just did last weekend yeah um and before this season started you were talking about stopping playing and quitting comp Fortnite. What, what caused you to do that and why'd you change your mind or actually hold um, on not why'd you change your mind are you still hopefully you're, you're still sticking around right oh uh, yeah for now all right um so yeah original question what made you want to walk away uh just like i just didn't like the direction that the game was going like a lot of a lot of people think that i wanted to quit the game just because i didn't, didn't do good in solos but like it's just, like, the direction that the game was taking at the time with, like, the caddy launcher and all these, like, mythic weapons and stuff. I was just, like, if I don't land in a mythic POI, which I didn't, didn't want to do, I was just, like, I don't even know. this game. Like, it, it was just a really stressful time for, like, during that FNCS and stuff because I kind of went from, like, being the best, like, I was, like, one of the only players that qualified for every single finals and called for heats three out of four weeks and then i just went to heats and i kind of just like didn't do good at all so i kind of just like let everybody down so i was just like wow like that was really all just for like six hundred dollars and i kind of made 50k so i kind of just i don't know i took a break well it, like the break really wasn't meant to be a break it was meant for me to like not play the game anymore but I kind of was just like, you know what? I really have nothing better going on with COVID, so I might as well just give the game another shot. I'm assuming you're you're happy that you've made that decision at this point. Uh, yeah. I okay. guess. I, I guess you could say that. <laughs> How would you say it? I mean, you know, I'm I'm happy with it. Gotcha. For sure. Well, since you you, you thought about quitting at one time what was the original drive for you to start playing um are you asking like what made me start playing the game well what made you want to compete i guess would be my question um honestly like there's no really true answer to that i kind of just played a couple events and then just kind of liked it i was just like all right because i've always been competitive like like i said call of duty i've always played as competitive as my age limit could get and then uh, i just started playing events and stuff i kind of just liked it like i didn't i like at first i didn't really take it that serious right but then i just started playing it and it was like you know what this is kind of fun you know and this kind of went from there yeah it's an awesome game i definitely enjoy it but this year for, particularly for you has been definitely a pop-off year um 2020 has been the by far, I'd say your most successful year, right? Um, what caused you to to take that leap? Because you started consistently placing in April, and then since about August, you guys consistently placed in trio, and you specifically have been placing at the top of solo events as well. What's changed for you? Um. Well, like a lot of things with like. Uh, well, all right, so. Let's consider myself like a, a a tier a tier two pro. Like that's just that's like an argument for other people to decide what level of pro I am. But like let's say tier two, right? Okay. A lot of tier two players, the things that like hold them back from being a tier one player are very small, very small mistakes. Like stuff like that they do in one end game that completely ruins like the course of their whole entire tournament. So I just started like looking over all my games and stuff from like tournaments. I was like, all right, so if I don't do that one small thing, that goes that way and kind of just like fixed up like all the mistakes that I made and stuff and just 
fix my mentality as well. Like mentality is like it means a lot in solo events, and it's like kind of like the most common like thing people say for solo events. But like your mentality like needs to be good. Like you can't be mad or like you know, like if you die, you kind of just have to go to the next game and just leave it. Oh, one hundred percent. Um, I, I think just watching people play solo cash cups and rage quitting off of them on a, a regular basis proves that point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So is there anything you wish you knew before you started competing now, now that you're kind of at the top? Uh, I wish I knew how stressful it would be. <laughs> it's, really, it's really like, I don't know, like no matter like, how good you are like you kind of like you can't stop playing like if say like after fncs i took like a two-week break like that two-week break that hits hard like that's not like a a baby and like you know like you'll be back well i mean it's possible don't get me wrong or like let's say like let's say like a month like say i took a month break you right. it's hard to come back from that and like be as good as you once swear. Like, it's not easy. Like, you have to, like, like Fortnite, 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 Fortnite. And it's just, I don't know. Like, if you don't have a good mental health, like, Fortnite's definitely just not the game to play. Because you have to keep up with it so much. No doubt. There's so many people, and the difference between esports and regular sports is you can play a, a video game for two three times as long as you could actually work out like there's limitations to practicing traditional sports but esports is much less physically straining and more mentally straining so yeah i see what you mean i'm a lot of the, the top guys play this game a ton <laughs> yeah for sure how do you uh, yeah continue. how do you keep yourself like you talk about your mental state and how you have a good mentality. How do you keep yourself in that, uh, that good mindset? Um, it's just like over, over time I've dealt with a lot of mental health issues and stuff, which I don't want to get too much deeper into that, but it's just like, once you learn that, like, let's say for example, in like a real world, real world situation, once you like, realize that your mentality is bad and like just everything like your whole entire output on or yeah like on life is just bad like you don't want to keep living like that you kind of just have to like force yourself to change it and it's just like for competing and stuff like my outlook on the just like the way i was performing i just become really really tilted and really like super stressed out and stuff i was just like all right i don't want to keep like living like this and like getting mad over like small stuff so i kind of just like would play cash cups and if i die i would just like take a deep breath and just realize that i got you know x amount of games or whatever left and that you just need to perform as best as you can even if you don't make money it's just one event it's a hell of a way to look at it bro especially for someone at your age there's a lot of adults who who don't see life in, in a way you just put it so congrats to you you should be proud of that thank you all right, well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the game. So you hop on, start playing. What what does a day in the life of Miro look like? Um, just I, I just like wake up. You know, I either order food or make food or whatever. Like normally, I just have breakfast, and then normally I'm just for a lot of the day I'm just in Discord. You know, cranking like editing courses and just like peace control courses and stuff like that just talking to my friends and stuff until scrims happen where i either am playing with a set duo or trio and then we're trying out a set duo or trio and yeah it's just normally it i normally i like to go to bed like somewhat later because that's just like how my sleep schedule is because with me having like a freelance type of school schedule i can wake up almost whenever i want so I don't have to do that super early, wake up like seven in the morning, eight in the morning, do school. And I can kind of just do it whenever I want. So I tend to go to bed a little bit later. Cool. Yeah. It seems like a lot of, a lot of Fortnite players like to stay up late and sleep while the light's out. Oh yeah. Um, how many hours a day do you think you play? Just ballpark. Uh, let me think. So... 
Well, are you talking like me looking at my monitor playing the game or just like how long like the game of Fortnite is open and you are doing yeah, something like within building, Fortnite. Yeah, within Fortnite. Probably like I'd like to say like ten plus hours a day. Jeez. Probably. It doesn't surprise me, but that's a lot of time. Well, uh, if we're not counting like me just doing other stuff on my computer, it might be a little bit less than that. It might be like nine to eight. Just gotcha. depends. Like, it depends a day. Like if there's a lot going on in Fortnite and I'm having fun, I'll play for a while. But if there's really nothing going on, I'm not gonna force myself to right. excuse me play it. And so walking into solo events, and I guess we'll start with solos before we talk about FNCS. What do you think has made your play style so effective? and you be able to be so consistent both in solos and trios within the past few months um well my play style in solos i like to fight a lot i don't i'm not really like a passive player like normally in everything i play i just like to fight like just a passive play style on na it's just it works but like if you go to fight somebody that's playing a passive play style they're just gonna waste all their mats tarping away from you it's really easy to fight people on na like as you can see in eu while all the good fighters perform and there's not really like placement players as much it's just because everyone likes that plays placement if they run into a good fighter it's just really like it's really hard for them to fight because they're just not ready like they're not ready for someone that is ready to fight them and then for trios our play style works because me and day obviously being the main two fighters would just play our ones and then like reverse would just hold his one until me and day finish with our guys and then he would just normally be in like the back or whatever and then whenever the fight gets like too chaotic he would just pull us off and just tell us to back up that's interesting so and we would all just play as like an established like three and not like a all split you know yeah but watching the grand finals i don't think there was a single time where you guys took a bad fight um sometimes you know shit happens it's Fortnite, but i i don't think you guys took a, a fair amount of mid game fights, and I can't remember one off the top of my head that I'm like, that was probably a shitty idea. Yeah, we normally we like to take like reverse is really good at calling like when a fight is gonna be a bad fight, when we need to take a fight, or like when it's just like because I'm really good at like let me rephrase I'm really good at calling when we need to fight. Like I'll just say, listen, guys, our loot sucks. Like there's no point of playing this out. If we're gonna get no placement, we might as well just fight this team. Like, I'm really good at like calling surge as well. Reverse is really good at getting surge, but I honestly know where to find most of the surge anywhere. And I'm actually me, Day, and Reverse are honestly probably one of the best trios for getting tags. If we like find people, obviously sometimes where we land, like you can't really like see nobody, obviously. But like if we have a full trio in front of us, we're gonna get a lot of tags. And and most of the time, like honestly, with our play style. We don't even really go for tags. We normally just pick a fight because, like, once you pick a fight, you don't have to get surge like the rest of the game. Like, you don't have to deal with tags. You have to like, well, like, I guess positioning as well is important. But with that, like, you could just pick one fight, trade damage, or wipe the fight, and you're done for the rest of the game. Like, you don't you don't you don't even need to open your box, eat tags or anything. So that's just normally our play style is just being really aggro players and just fighting a lot of people. I specifically remember there was probably about two or three times either you or Reverse made a call, and it was when the zone was about to start closing. So you guys clearly knew you're not waiting until Storm Surge actually starts hitting, and you're like, we're getting in this team's box next to us. You just pick a team, and you guys go balls to the wall, and every yeah. single time you, you won that fight. Um, that was clearly a plan, right? Oh, yeah. We don't, like, I mean, we'll try and get tags. Like, we're not going to just rely on our, like, fighting skills to get our Storm Surge. Like, if we, like, we would do, like, every single rotate we could to find, like, tags and stuff. And if we just couldn't find tags, it just is what it is. And you just have to fight a team like any team with a brain would do. If you don't have tags, you just have to fight if yeah. Storm Surge is about to pop. Unless you're, like, one down and you could get a couple tags or, like, trade Surge and get back. But norm the time, normally all the times our fights are, like, 100% calculated. Nice, nice. Um, how did the trio come together? How did you guys all wind up starting to play together, and, and did it work at first? Um, yeah, I mean, me and Day, we've known each other for a bit, just off of, like, wagers and stuff. We were never as close as we are, like, now. And then 
he started playing with reverse and like at the time i was like trioless and so day was like hey we should play with miro to reverse and then we kind of just played we got second in the first cash cup we played in and then we just have honestly like there's probably been a solid two events as a trio that we haven't made money in we've made money in almost every single event we've played damn there's only one cash there's only one cash cup this season we didn't make money in I don't know that there's probably anyone else. Uh, maybe there might be another trio that could say that, but that's impressive. Um, yeah, it all just it all just worked out. Like we got second in the cash cup, and then we played ninja battles the next day. And I think we got, don't quote me on this. We either got third or fifth. I don't know. It's some. It's either one of those two. But we did really good, and then we just kind of stuck together for the past couple of months. Was there one thing while you guys worked together that? you were consistently working on or you struggled with or just generally it seemed to work uh our off spawn was kind of bad like there's a point in time like where we just had no idea where to land because we didn't want to settle for like nothing which we did in like grand finals <laughs> but like we just we wanted the alpha poi and like everyone thought we were kind of just like a dog shit trio so no one would like give it up no matter how many times we kill them off spawn or like anything they just didn't want to give it up and it's just a grief fest so we were just stuck trying to find somewhere and then we just honestly just said if we got to go somewhere we might as well just go dirty and then mikey and them called for grand finals and we're like all right we know they're just gonna grief so we're just gonna try and alpha a smaller team off of their drop spot which worked okay is there anything that you learn that you're gonna be taken away from true f and cs um honestly like trios was probably like one of the best learning experiences i've had like just playing with reverse and stuff like the stuff that we do like in fortnite like it's honestly okay to sometimes make like a 50 50 rotate like sometimes we would have like we'd be stuck in a really bad position and we would just say listen we have to go this way and you know we might die but it's just the only thing we can do like it, it, we i just learned a lot to not hesitate like one thing we did as a trio we never hesitated like we made a call and we're like we have to stick with this call or we're gonna die type thing yeah so yeah that definitely showed and the cool thing about your guys' trio is, regardless of who made the call, you all just immediately listened. It wasn't questioning. It wasn't a conversation. You had trust in, in one another. So oh, yeah. We had a lot of trust in, like, Reverse as an IGL. And, like, I guess you can say I was, like, the co-IGL and stuff. And, like, whenever... Even when they made a call as a fragger or whatever, we would just trust them. Like, we would all look in different spots and stuff for rotations. And as soon as somebody called it out... And we weren't seeing anything. We we're like, you know what? That's got to be better than what we're thinking. So let's just stick with what he said and then just go and follow the rotate. And normally, most of the time, it worked. In a lot of teams that I see in Fortnite, they'll make a call and they'll start like talking and they'll start hesitating and stuff. And it's just not worth it to hesitate. You waste a lot of time. And then that rotate's gone by the time you've had a conversation about it. Yeah. So trios, solos, duos. What what are you hoping squads? I guess what are you hoping comes next for FNCS? Uh, I mean, I had a bad experience in squads, and then I don't know. I just I I kind of want squads because I don't think I'm the greatest duo player, just because I don't have a lot of experience with it. But I mean, no matter what I'm gonna play, I just think I'm gonna adapt to the meta like I've always done. Cool. And what happened with you and Day? You guys can can figure it out, or you wanted to try um, somebody else? It's just like both of our potentials. Like we're both like fraggers at heart. Like our potential is just staying in the back of a tarp and like going for kills and stuff. And I just like I didn't trust myself enough to like tarp in like a finals or something. I didn't think I was like good enough at tarping. And both of us want to like in duos. It's like one person can frag, you know, until yeah. you get out of the zone. And like I just wanted us to both have like that fragging role with a keyboard and mouse player tarping us or not even a keyboard and mouse player with a just igl or something tarping us instead of two fraggers which we wouldn't lose a fight but 
it's just an end game though it doesn't really matter like you need like a decent tarper at most and i just didn't have enough confidence in duos to do it fair enough fair enough hopefully you're able to find someone i think if anything you've both proven you should should be with some other top tier players within at least dreamhack and then if we get fncs next yeah it's just i don't know a lot of people like to stick with players that are just in their friend group and that aren't even that like good at the game anymore yeah that's that's a that's a whole nother conversation yeah but i'm not even gonna get into that (laughs) yeah I'm, i'm with you on that one man um all right let's start to wrap this up here i got a a question just wanted to learn your experience with team new age so far you've been living in the house you've been on the org for about a month share some insights as to how how that's gone uh i mean honestly like at first like truthfully i was just like all right i just i don't i didn't really trust it you know like because it's start starter org i'm like all right so they're getting this nice nice house something something's got to be up you know and then like i just like yeah. moved in and just everything just seemed to work out like it's just like the owner is super super nice kirsch like everyone is it's not like a lot of orgs will treat people as like a statistic and not really like a family you know like a lot of i guess you could say orgs which i'm not going to get into will just treat like they'll sign a player and they'll just treat them as a number like and it's just they're not really lenient with like oh, if you can't stream a day or something like it's more of just whatever it's in your contract you have to do it's not really like I guess you can say they're not very lenient with it. Like you kind of just are forced to do what's in the contract, stuff like that. And they don't really care about you as much as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But like with Team New Age and stuff, like you're, it's very like lenient and stuff. Like if something's going on in personal life, you could talk about it. Can't make a day of streaming or something. You just, you know, you could talk about everything and stuff. It's just a really good team to be on, in my opinion. Awesome. That sounds really good and refreshing because. There's been some horror stories about new orgs in Fortnite, so I'm glad to see it's working out for you. Yeah. Then, and anything, any funny stories? What was living in the house like? There, there a moment that stands out to you about living in uh, the TNA house? Uh, the owner, he, he tried to, he tried to make a scary video or whatever and try and scare everyone in the house, and it just <laughs> like he, so slick asked me to go carry some boxes out to like the garbage or whatever and like he was hiding behind one of the boxes and like he tried to scare me it just didn't happen it's just it's so funny <laughs> it didn't happen. nice nice all right um and taking a step back from fortnite i guess it could be fortnite since you've been playing it for so long but what's been your favorite experience within gaming so far um if I had to pick the most generic answer, it'd probably be winning Trio FNCS. Like, that was just such a crazy, I guess you could say, surreal feeling. Yeah. I mean, uh, that makes total sense. Uh, it's the biggest tournament of the season for Fortnite. It's a major tournament. You guys killed it. So, I would not expect anything else. Uh, I mean, just like calling calling my mom and my brother and stuff it was just a crazy super crazy feeling really it's just it, that's like a once in a lifetime feeling there's only like 15 15 other players in the world that can say at one time that they won true fncs yes sir and hopefully there, there's more to come for you man uh, do you have yeah. a favorite player or streamer you like to watch when you're not playing yourself um honestly i don't really watch much fortnite outside of playing it but if i had to pick like a favorite player honestly it would probably be let me think it'd probably be one of the boys in the commandment trio commandment edgy or santa they're probably one of my favorite trios to watch or as a controller player to pick av is probably my favorite controller player to watch gotcha definitely solid players is there someone you modeled your game after while you were coming up in the scene or it kind of got built organically Mm, i just tried to play like the best fighters possible like i've always tried to be as good as kanada and like stretch at fighting all right then two more questions i'll let you go here and thank you again for 
hanging out with me, sharing this. Um, what do you like to do outside of gaming? Um, well, I guess I could answer that question, like, as if I still did stuff outside of gaming, <laughs> really. Like, um, I don't know. With Fortnite, it takes up a lot of my time. I used to play a lot of basketball and stuff. I used to be actually... I mean, I'm still pretty pretty active, but, like, basketball used to take up a huge chunk of my life, and after I started taking Fortnite competitively, I just did not have time to do that. But other than that, yeah, I just – I have a lot of animals and stuff, so I like taking care of them and just, like – I guess you could say whenever I'm outside, I usually just, like, play basketball or something. All right, cool. And last question for you. Um, what, what's coming up next? You got any plans? What's um, What's going on for Miro? Uh, really? I mean, I don't know. The future is just, that's kind of just a question that gets answered as I continue to play the game, really. I mean, it's just like, just hoping to perform the best that I can in the next FNCS. And then hopefully once World Cup comes around, call for World Cup. I'll be rooting for you, my man. Definitely. Um, I've enjoyed having you and speaking with you. Is, you want to give yourself a shout out as to where people can find you? Uh... My Twitter is MiroFN, as most people know, and my YouTube is just Miro, and then my Instagram is TNA underscore Miro, and that's just really it. I appreciate you having me. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. I do appreciate it.